We're ready to get started with the next group. Thanks very much. Uh, next up is Erickson Deli. Try clicking it. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening. Thank you for having us, and uh, thank you for having us speak to you today. Before I begin, I'd like to say thank you to BU and to Erickson for hosting us this weekend. We've had a great time. We really enjoyed meeting you all. So thank you very much. <clears throat> we are Team Delhi. My name is Sean. I'm here with my colleagues, Manuel. Kenichi and Unkit. We're here today to talk to you about creating value in the network society through education and expertise. What does this mean? Well, as you all know, the network society is rapidly becoming a reality. 50 billion connected consumer devices by 2020. Everything that can benefit from being connected will be connected. From your smartphone, your tablet PC, even your television, connected to the cloud, all enabled by mobility and broadband. Ericsson calls this the social web of things. <coughs> Excuse me. The question facing us today is, how do we translate and leverage upon the social web of things into the social web of ideas? How will this revolutionize how we share knowledge and learn? Now, before we present our specific recommendations, I'd like to talk to you about a general theme that we see pertaining to the two topics we'll be talking about today. Number one, the education industry. And number two, how companies can align their internal structures to leverage upon the social web of ideas. At the core of our theme <clears throat> is this, a, so a software-based platform based in the cloud, on top of which is analytics. Feeding into this are content generators enabled by broadband. Reading from this are content consumers enabled by mobility and broadband. And of course, feeding through the system are feedback loops all the way up. Now, what does this platform and the analytics and the cloud give us? We see it as giving us these tools. Collaboration between users, access to a content library, real-time ratings, reviews, and feedback, an analytics dashboard letting you take the pulse of the ecosystem in real time, and a customized solution. Again, this is a general theme that we see pertaining to the two topics we'll be talking about today. Now to produce, uh, to tell you about our vision for the education industry, here's Manuel. Thank you, Sean. So what we see is that the, in the education industry, there should be a platform that will provide adaptive content to everywhere, anytime, and uh, through everywhere. So we see that the major players in the education industry are parents, students, teachers, and administrators. All of them will be able to access this platform that we envision through the cloud thanks to broadband. So what we think is the first thing that this platform should have is a communication level that we provide with IP connectivity to all these devices. On the top of it, we see all the educational material that can be from traditional text material taken to the digital world to multimedia educational applications, and tests and assignments. On the top of it, we have reporting analytics tools. They will allow us to leverage the customization that we think that each student needs. And then we need to assess the performance of each student 
and to be able to generate a study plan for each of them. In parallel of it, we see a collaborative dashboard that not only will provide us with the status of the system, but it will also provide us with communication uh, through the diff with the different uh, users that interact with the cloud. We think that Ericsson should develop this platform, and they should develop it now. We think they should develop it and provide it for free, both to educational institutions and to final users. They should provide a platform and a basic educational free content. And then they should provide some uh, premium educational content that will generate some revenues. So if Ericsson developed this today, how will the future will be? How will it be 2015? We'd like to show you some use cases that we foresee for the future. We want to show you some video. Uh, In the morning, support my family. I want to study, but I am only able to do so at night. Before Ericsson, I, I had to go to tuition centers and pay them a lot of money. But now, with Ericsson's new platform, I am able to interact with top-notch professors and watch their videos on my own pace and my own time. And I am even able to ask them questions and get them to answer them. Hello. My name is Manuel. I come from Spain. My country has been in crisis for five years, but finally I found a job. Thanks to Ericsson platform, I'm able to provide online Spanish lessons to students all over the world. Thanks to the platform, I just can upload my videos and they can watch them. But in case they want to schedule an appointment, they just have to send me an email and I can provide them with real time online feedback. Ericsson platform is convenient for them and for me. I'm a student in Japan. I'm learning English. After my school subscribed to the Ericsson platform, learning English has become much funnier. The platform provides plenty of games, so I can download them to my mobile phone and play whenever I want. My teacher also provides a studying plan to me. It is very convenient and efficient way to learn English for me. I'm a school principal with over 2,000 students in my school. <coughs> Ericsson's platform allows me to monitor the performance of each student, teacher, class, and grade level. I can compare our results against national standards and adjust our curriculum accordingly. Ericsson's platform has made our school a great place for teachers, students, and administrators. Thank you, Ericsson. Thank you, Ericsson. So these are just some of the use cases that we foresee for the future. Uh, let me. No. 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 Well, that's enough. <laughs> Sorry about that. So what we can see in this video is that different users with different roles interact in a different manner with the system. In this diagram here, we see the major roles, the major players that interact with the system. On the left side, we see two, uh, two really important players that without them we couldn't do anything. The content generators that will provide the educational material and the telecom operators that not only they will provide with the connectivity but also with the multimedia transmission that could be enabled thanks to software provided by Ericsson. On the bottom, we see a student and teachers. We also see parents. The students will have adaptive content that will be adapt according to their needs. Some subjects they will go faster, some subjects they will go slower. And they will have access to a collaborative network where they can interact with their peers from the classroom and even from the neighborhood. They will have access to a robot answering machine. In case their parents or the teachers are not available, they can just type a question and we'll get automatic answer. Both parents and teachers can have daily progress report to see where the needs of the children are, where are the weaknesses, where they have to improve. Teachers will have access to a huge amount of course content, so they will be, uh, well, they'll need to have a course planning tool to, uh, to develop a first uh, an initial course for each of the children. Uh, uh, the multimedia and all these kinds of applications will allow teachers to have more free time to dedicate individual time for each of the students. 
And I think that, uh, we have seen in the video, administrator, we get aggregated statistics to see how the students, also how the teachers are doing. And this is really important because we have to see how the progress of each of the uh, students assigned to each uh, teacher they are doing. And they can compare with benchmark in a national or a regional level. Now, Kenichi is going to talk about the strategy that we see for this business. So I'm going to talk about the business strategy of this platform. Our vision of the platform to provide education to everyone, everywhere, anytime, can be realized as a business, which means we can make a profit from this platform. Ericsson has several core competencies, such as close relationship with telecom operators. These competencies lead value, value propositions, such as wide connectivity and customized education. In our uh, future video, you can see that uh, the guy in Spanish, uh, Spain, provides Spanish education to the guy in India. This international collaboration thing will happen uh, to this uh, value propositions. Based on, based on these value propositions, we can identify marketing factors, such as customers, products, markets, and channels. In terms of customers, thanks to the wide connectivity, we can reach out almost all people who hope to have education, which means our future customer would be schools and its students and also individuals. As for the markets, we will begin with the a business in Scandinavia, and then expand its business in English-speaking countries. In Scandinavia, the education system is highly developed, and also we Ericsson headquarters this area, so we can easily get into this market. When we look at the market, there are several players there. By using two axes, connectivity and value at services, such as uh, customized education, we draw the proposition, uh, position map. As you can see, uh, Ericsson can still has its proposition in this map. <coughs> because IBM tries to provide similar platform to the market, we cannot have a partnership with them. However, by providing connectivity to the content generators, we can have a partnership with them. They provide a good content to us, and we provide good content to our customers. In addition to that, further partnership will enhance our business. On the application side, Especially, game maker will play a good role. This is because, generally speaking, games attract more people, even in educational context. On the platform side, to have a relationship with the government is very important. This is because, sometimes in emerging countries, people are struggling with having an education because of the limitation of the budget. So, with the support of the government, we can smoothly get into the business. Also, having a partnership with cloud providers such as Amazon EC2, we will save the initial investment to, imp to implement the platform. So, my colleague Ankit will talk about the implement and the financials of this platform. Thank you, Kanichi. So why do we propose doing this educational platform? What we found was that developed and developing countries are spending more than 3% of the GDP on education alone. How do we propose to implement our platform? In 2012, we proposed the development of the platform and forming up the partnerships that are necessary for the success of this platform. In 2013, we plan to launch in Scandinavia. In 2014, 
we plan to launch in UK and North America. 2015, we plan to launch in India. Why are we targeting these markets? Because A, all these countries are spending about three to four percent of their GDP on education. B, these countries are English speaking primarily. And they, and we have already English content available and we can easily leverage that to generate revenue. C, these, all these countries focus on innovation and the people in these countries adopt them easily. And now let us look at our model costs and revenues. Most of the revenues of this model would come initially from school subscriptions. But by 2015, we would see an increasing revenue from applications as more and more, more, and more people are coming onto the platform and they discover the uniqueness of the games and how these, uh, these games would actually leverage revenue for Ericsson. On the cost side, by 2012 would be mostly development. In 2015, the development side would be minuscule, but the, con the content providers would be the major, co major cost component of this model because they get a cut out of the platform and as and when content is delivered to the users. And how, how would the mo model make money? What we project in by 2015, this model would generate about $1.2 billion in revenue and about $127 million in net profit for Ericsson and giving us a healthy 10% net profit margin. We did a sensitivity analysis, analysis on our model. What the, what the sensitivity analysis was done made basically on the growth rate. And what we are targeting as our initial market share is 0.10% of the 4% these countries are spending on their GDP. Even with this small market share and about 20% growth rate, we see a healthy IRR of 62%. And in the optimistic case, we see a healthy IRR of 70%. And the payback of this model would be around 2.7 years. Now let's move on to the second part of our presentation, which is the organization. How the organization with its principles can benefit from the social web of ideas and innovation, and how it will be impacted by it. What we feel is Ericsson already has a collaborative culture, but what, can, what they can initially benefit from is the online idea brainstorming, the microblogs, the wikis, and the customer feedback enablement. But all of this cannot work without certain principles that are to be incorporated in the organization, which could be Ericsson or any other one. The first one is everybody can contribute. Everybody is heard without fear of censure, and without fear of any discrimination. But even with this, people are not motivated to contribute because it is not part of their daily job. So how do we, how do we solve that problem? What we propose is compensation is tied to contribution. So how you contribute and what your contribution ranking is by the peers would, would give you your compensation. And this is how Enterprise 2.0 would streamline businesses. What, now let's move over to the impact. What we found was a McKinsey survey of about 1,000 companies which have adopted Enterprise 2.0 and how they're benefiting out of it. What we found was an average of 20% improvement in the processes after introduction of collaborative technologies. What we specifically want to highlight it's the speed of access to knowledge increased by 30%. Revenue increased by 15%. Speed of access to internal experts increased by 35%. Effectiveness of marketing increased by 25%. Travel costs decreased by 20%. For a company like Ericsson, where costs of travel are a major factor, 20% revenue, revenue, uh, revenue saving is major, with major, major, major on the major uh, contributor to the gross margin. Now, I will give it over to Sean to close. Thank you, Ankit. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us today. To close, I'd like to take you back to where we started this evening with our theme, a platform in the cloud with analytics, content generation, content consumers enabled by broadband and mobility. 
The cloud gives us collaboration, content library, ratings, reviews, analytics, dashboard. We saw a new business model. Ericsson can, Ericsson can leverage their core competencies, partner with content generators, create a business that will net revenues over $1.2 billion, profits by $130 million by 2015, an IRR of about 70% of the optimistic case. We saw how companies can leverage their internal structure and adhere to some key principles to <coughs> leverage upon the social web of ideas, an open collaborative envir environment, and tying compensation to collaboration and quality of that collaboration. This is where we see the value in the network society through education and expertise. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, one question maybe if, um, regarding the, the, the videos with the use cases. I, I, I loved it. <laughs> how, how do you see from a user perspective why Ericsson? What would be so unique in your proposition that would make us, and like you say, that we need to invest in that now? So, Thank you very much. That's a great question. If I can take you back to our, uh, our positioning map. We will, Ericsson has key competencies that can be leveraged upon that are very useful. Close relationship with the telecom operators allows them to build out the connectivity. If they partner with the content providers, they can provide a complete solution. For example, to a school who's trying to provide this education infrastructure, you can provide the connectivity environment and the content and the software platform as a total solution. So this is where we see Ericsson as being a a, a, a great, being positioned in a great place to leverage upon this technology. And also on the top of that, as we said before, this uh, reporting analytics tool will provide us this customization. So that's where we see that we have given some added value to. It's not only about the uh, connectivity, but also about the customization that is thanks to the analytics that we're building up on the platform. How would you address the market? Because one of the problems with education is that it's either very centralized, very government-driven, and very difficult to change, or very fragmented and, and very small units. How do you envision that? I mean, I see country by country, but within that country, how would we go about reaching the customers? <clears throat> sure, great question. Um, we have over here... Uh, you know, partnering with governments, but not just governments, you know. Uh, you can do this at the state level, at the district level, right? We see license, we see giving our platform free with some basic content to schools, to school districts. And they, we charge them subscription for premium content, for modules, for analytics on top of that. So this is how we get them in. And we can partner with the districts to deliver this to, to, all, to all kinds of schools but it would be a, a completely standardized package that would be the free of charge yeah. model. And then any additional content, additional customizations would be charged for, or how would the model work? Yeah, the, the basic, we see, we, we envision that the basic package will be free mm. with the basic content. Mm. But, uh, you know, premium content, analytics on top of that dashboard, uh, interacting with your teacher, allowing the teacher to see where the student is, allowing your parent to log in and see where your students are, you know, allowing administrators to log in, see where the class levels are, all these kind of functionalities can be value adds. So the idea is to provide the free platform so that they try it, see if they like it, and then you start like, selling more stuff. Good, thank you. Um, you talked about the education industry. What are the different levels that exist there? I mean, you got primary school education, you got college education, you got grad school, you got executive education, etc. Did you guys take a chance, have a chance to look at all of that, or did you look at only primary school education? We see this platform or this model as being applicable to many different levels. For example, K-12 and college and executive education. Now, we focused on thinking about the K-12. It just seemed like a natural entry point, but. We don't see why this couldn't be used in a similar manner for, for example, the college level. Where is the money in education? Is it at that level? Or is there, how is the money spent? How is the money distributed? So, 
the money in education comes from two areas. First is the schools, which will subscribe to the uh, will subscribe to the content, and second is from individuals. So what what happens currently in I, I can give you an example of India is that there are individual tutors that come to your home and they are not punctual or they are not that great. They charge about thirty US dollars an hour. But if we can provide top-notch professors and they can uh, answer your questions either by uh, either by analytics or by themselves at ten dollars an hour, that is a great value add to these people, and they can do that at their own convenience and their own home. And that is that is how we envision this platform giving value to individuals. And then the school subscriptions would obviously give value to as we have already covered to the administrators and how they can locate it how can they run the analytics and how teachers and parents can follow their students and or children the, follow them through and see how they're doing and that is that that we feel people would be very so let, let's talk about the subscription model a little bit i mean is that is that something that exists today or is this going to be a, a the concept of paying for content by schools, is that a new concept? It's, it is not. It's not. So do, how do they pay for it today? Sorry. And how much do they pay today? How much do they pay today? Yeah. Do you have data on that? No, uh, it is mostly a new model what we are proposing. They are not paying, they are paying for books. <laughs> they are paying for textbooks, they are paying for the teachers, they are paying for the teachers' time. So what we are saying is that we deliver the lectures, get the books out. We deliver the books through our platform. So obviously that kind of value that comes into our system. So is this a replacement? I mean, where, where is the extra money going to come from in the ecosystem to suddenly pay for subscriptions when they're not paying for it today? Or are we going to fire some teachers who are creating content today? Well, how, how is this going to work? So, so uh, most, of, most of what we have seen in US and Canada is that the educational budget is going down. So 5% is going down to 5% currently. And uh, what what is happening in this is that teacher student ratio is increasing. So what we are proposing is individual attention to students and even parents would be willing to pay for that and schools would be willing to pay because our, our model would be cheaper than hiring a teacher. So we are we'll be replacing, essentially replacing some of the teachers and, the, and what the pupils would be able to do is at their own pace and at their own time learn the concept but when they get to class, they can just ask. No, I understand the convenience part. Yeah. OK, that's no but problem. No, but I'm just trying I think to that figure We are not replacing the teacher. So the teacher set aside. So the student have access to all this information. So you watch to your lessons. And then the teacher is there to so, so solve your question. So it's just uh, uh, what you have is more time for the teacher to provide individual dedication to each student. So I think it's a win-win situation. Uh, yeah, Fine. I mean, uh, to me, just the concept of going into a market that is not paying for content today because they're paying teachers' salaries and they expect the but, teachers to pay content, to suddenly go to a subscription model to acquire content, it just seems like a foreign concept. And how do you convince the schools to adopt that? That's a great question. We, um, some of the content that we actually do pay for today are textbooks. So we envision delivering some of that content via platform. So, so it's a replacement substitute then? It's a, it's a substitute for some of the content such as, such as textbooks. It's an augmentation on top of your regular teaching by, by the convenience as you understand. And we believe that that, that uh, augmentation, that value add is what will convince schools that this is worth subscribing to because it frees up teachers to increase their quality of education, the quality of the time that they spend with students. They, you know, it's, uh, students can learn at their own pace and they can do better overall and we can deliver some of the content that you're actually already paying for, right, with textbooks, with tutors, all through this platform. Okay. Then from a go-to-market perspective, you, you talked about this game, game makers. How, how did you guys zero in on this and in the big scheme of things, what role will they play? Well, uh, as you know, Apple's popularized the idea of an app, an app store where we see that people are willing to pay for games to play on their phone. Now games uh, are also an, external, uh, an excellent educational tool. So we envision part of our platform is an app store where you can buy and download games onto your mobile devices through our platform 
built by these game makers that actually provide educational value. So that's where we came up with the idea. Okay. Maybe a question on the collaboration side. Mm -hmm. you, you had a point there on uh, compensate for contribution, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can, we, can we expand a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Compensation. Everybody, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So the compensation linked to contribution. So currently what uh, what happens is in Enterprise 2.0, many organizations are willing to implement it, but they are empty, they're dead, because people in, on the, in their daily jobs are not motivated to contribute. So what we are proposing is that this, the Ericsson and other organizations adopt it as a principle. So, your con so if I contribute and my contribution is rated highly by my peers, then it becomes a data point which goes into my performance review in, at the end of the year and my compensation is affected by it. So if, if, a, if, a, if an em employee is incentivized by this way, then collaboration and contribution would happen. In, instead of just relying on, Putting, it, putting out wiki or microblogs out there and allowing employees to just suddenly start using it. So let me ask a question on, um, you guys talked about Khan Academy or you had the logo of Khan Academy in there. Can you give me one example of a piece of content that is not available in the ecosystem today that somebody would pay $5 for? Uh, I mean, people pay for textbooks. Are you talking about specifically Khan Academy videos? I mean, videos? you talk about premium content. I mean, the base platform is free. Some premium content has to attract revenue. One example so, of some premium piece of content. Whatever, uh, just textbook. You have a textbook digitalized. Mm. Then you pay $5 instead of the $20 that cost the hard copy version. And to build and on even, top of that is Khan Academy currently doesn't have capability of asking questions. So I as a student, if I have questions, so I can do it at my own pace, fine. But if I have questions and on that model, how, how do, who do I ask? How do, so I, people would pay for that, that I can ask questions, they would be answered by, by professors or by other, student, uh, other students, and that, that is the premium ad which we have. Okay, good. Um, do we have any more questions? Good. Thank you. Thank you.